Hey YouTube, it's Cash. In this video, we are taking a hard look at some lesser, lesser known test equipment synth devices. I'm going to explain them as well as I can, and then I will demo them using my test equipment wall. None of these devices produce sound on their own. You really can get more out of them depending on how much you want to put in. I'm going to show two demos. They are both going to be affected by the same signals, and I will flip-flop the inputs around so you can get a better perspective on what these devices can do. If this sounds confusing, please keep watching. It will all make sense soon. I'm going to give a lot of detail and it will be long-winded, so I'll put some time marks in the description below if you want to jump to the demos. I'll start with something that most test equipment heads will be familiar with. It's a type of dual tracer, aka electronic switch. This more sophisticated version is by EG&G, Princeton Applied Research, model 4102, signal recorder. Dual tracers are used to display multiple signals on an oscilloscope at the same time. They can also be used to combine audio signals in a very specific way. You can control the levels like a mixer, but the output isn't as pure because the signals fight each other. You can set it to create something like a ducking effect. This particular unit can also add some dirt and grit when you drive the sensitivity. In these demos, I'll be using the A and B inputs and the Y recorder output in the back, but you can experiment with the format control and the other outputs. The second device is a Firebird 2000 Data Error Analyzer by Telecommunication Techniques Corporation. You'll notice that the rest of these units are used for telecommunication testing. I acquired these to possibly use for a live setup because they are designed to be portable, but this one is kind of a unitasker. It reminds me of a video that Heimbach made titled The Saddest Drone Machine. Basically, it needs a clock, and you can control the pitch of the pattern with the pattern control and the pattern using the switches in the back. I know that doesn't make sense. This silver module with the switches is something that can be switched out, but I don't know how many modules were made or what they all do. I had to use these pin to banana connectors to get audio using the TX data out with the ground. On a side note, I haven't been able to get any of the TRS connections to work, even with the proper cables, so you won't see me using them in this video. The third device is an HP jitter generator and receiver. I really have to experiment with this more, but it can take two or three signals and combine them to do some interesting things. It sounds like pulse generators fighting each other. It's fun when you up the tempo to teeth chattering territory. It would be cool for a jungle track, for example. The output is harsh, like a machine gun. In this video, I'll process the output through another device to tone it down, but this raw sound can be very useful depending on what you're trying to convey. I had to brutally modify the data output and the data input to accept BNC because it uses a connection that I've never seen before. But it's similar to a BNC, so with a little wire and some JB weld, I didn't have to open it up to make it work. I'll be using the clock on the generator side, data input on the receiver side, and the data output. My favorite in the last of the four is the Wilcom transmission and noise test set. This has an internal rechargeable battery that appears to have melted inside, but it still works so I just left well alone. I have a lot of weird stuff, but I don't have anything that sounds like this. I use the line A and B banana inputs and the noise count B and C out. You can control the combination of signals in a very unique way, and it also creates these odd sounding arpeggiated trills when you take the weighting and impedance controls to the extreme. These sounds are somehow generated by this device itself. It turns from a single combining tool with effects to some kind of voltage controlled synth. I only can guess that the arpeggi trills are somehow used in the noise count, and there's another device that is needed to make sense of them. 
Let's go over what I'll be sending into the devices. Even if you don't want to get into test equipment synth, this may still inspire you in your synth patching. I use two groups, which is something I like to do, like two islands interacting with each other. There is a total of seven inputs I need. I've explained what these other devices do in previous videos, so I'll put links in the corner if you want to learn more. The first group starts with this HP 3310A function generator. I'm just using it as a clock. The low out is clocking this WaveTech noise generator and the output is one of the seven. The sync out is clocking the data sequence generator. The data outputs are positive and negative sequence outputs and the clock outs are positive and negative clock through or half time. The positive data output is one of the seven signals I will use. The positive clock through and the half time clock are two more of the seven. I put the negative clock into the VCO input of an HP 3212A function generator and the VP out is one of the other seven I need. I put the negative data out into the trigger of a NIMBIN boxcar averager. The boxcar is combined with another boxcar using this mixer delay gate, which is strange in its own right. This polyrhythm weirdness is then put through this Bruin Care passive octave filter, which makes six of the seven if you're keeping track. The seventh is part of the second group I mentioned in the beginning. I split the jitter generator output. This signal will change depending on which of the other six signals I use to put into it. I just need to be sure that I don't feed it back into itself when I switch things around. I put one leg of the split into the trigger of the NIMBIN negative pulse generator. I put the pulse out into the VCG in of a WaveTech sweep generator and the 50 ohms out is the last of the seven. The second leg goes into the trigger input of another WaveTech sweep generator and the pulse out is the affected signal from the jitter generator that runs into the board. By the way, I'm only using four tracks and like most of my test equipment videos, what you hear is the two track stereo mix from my little PV mixer. Now that I've covered all the seven input signals, I'll go over the first demo configuration. I will use the positive clock from the data sequence generator for the data error analyzer. The HB 3212A is line A and the WaveTech noise is line B of the Wilcom. The WaveTech sweep is input A and the out from the Bruin Care is input B of the signal recorder. I used a halftime clock from the data sequence generator for the jitter generator clock in the sequence data for the data input. Here's what that sounds like.
Now I'm going to switch things around. I'll use the halftime clock for the data error analyzer. The Brule and Care filter is line A and the Wavetech sweep is line B of the Wilcom. The data sequence is input A and the HP3212A is input B of the signal recorder. The clock through or positive clock from the data sequence generator is clock in and the Wavetech noise is the data input of the jitter generator. You will hear some similar elements but this will really change the vibe of the overall sound. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspired you to try some test equipment synth. If you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe and as always thanks for watching.